Tuesday the 26th of May and this is the morning devotion. Hosea chapter 3 verse 1 says, The Lord said to me, Go show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. Hosea lived during the final calamitous days of Israel. He went through a succession of kings during his time as prophet, beginning with Jeroboam II, who was one of the worst kings in Israel's history. He witnessed the final slide of the country towards God's judgment at the hands of an enemy whom he identifies will be the Assyrian Empire. Now, we've already looked at some prophets who were given tough jobs to do, preaching to people who would not listen um, suffering at the hands of people who did not want to hear what was being preached. But I think Hosea got one of the toughest jobs of them all. He was asked to let part of his life become a dramatised version of God's message. He was to marry a woman who he's told in advance will be unfaithful to him. Now there's always been uncertainty over whether Gomer, the wife, was unfaithful before or after the marriage. But in spite of three children, as predicted, the marriage falls apart and Gomer leaves for a succession of lovers. It's well known throughout the community. Can you imagine the pain and humiliation that Hosea went through? It's a terrible story. I'm certain it was even worse to live through. But Gomer's wild, sensual living comes to an abrupt halt, not, not unlike that of the prodigal son in Jesus' story, who also had left his family and home. She's left exposed, deserted. The dark makeup around her eyes that once was used to lure men in with her seductive charms now smudged down her cheeks through the crying of tears. Her situation has become so bad that she has sold herself either into slavery or to become the mistress of yet another man. And then at that point of disgrace and despair and humiliation and misery for her, God tells Hosea to go and find his wife and buy her back. Hosea locates her. And pays what is a pitiful amount of money for her. Because really she's now worth virtually nothing to anyone. That is, except for Hosea. Who loves her and recommits himself and his love and his faithfulness to her once more. Can you take it? He gives his word to her. That he will love her and remain true to her. And he asks her to commit herself Again, to him, once more. No more affairs. It's a deeply moving image of God's love for Israel. This broken marriage is a symbol of God's relationship with Israel. God is the faithful husband, Israel the adulterous wife. God had rescued Israel from slavery. He had brought them out of Egypt taken them to Sinai where he entered into a covenant with them where, where he promised to faithfully be their God in the future. But when Israel got to the promised land, they took all the good things that God had given to them there and they gave them in worship to the Canaanite God Baal. They have an adulterous affair, spiritually speaking, with other gods. It's not hidden away. It's conducted brazenly in front of all people as the Israelites bow down and worship other gods. So God has a legitimate reason to bring the relationship to an end and divorce Israel. But he doesn't. He goes after them and seeks to get them back from others. He renews his love and his covenant with them. Why? I mean... Why would he do this? Because of his love, compassion and faithfulness. Years later, God would again pursue his people. 
Again, he would go through public humiliation and this time at a great price. He would buy them back because of his love, his compassion and his faithfulness. And he would do it through his own son, Jesus. So if today you feel you've gone too far away from God to be reconciled to him, remember Hosea and Gomer. If you feel you don't matter to God, that he doesn't care about you, remember Hosea and Gomer. If you feel unloved and unappreciated, remember Hosea and Gomer. If you feel written off, rejected and forgotten, remember Hosea and Gomer. In the New Testament, we have that famous verse, God is love. This is not some uh, namby-pamby love. This is strong, determined, committed, patient and enduring love. That's the love that God has for you and for me. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this stunning portrayal of your love and commitment to your people. You don't go back on your promises. You don't break your word. You're not tempted away from us because your love for us is pure and absolute. We're sorry that we betray this, that we roam in all directions, our fancy tickled by all kinds of others to whom we're happy to bow down before. More than ever, we see the meaning of the cross and the power of the forgiveness that was achieved there. What took place there was for us. And for that, we praise your name forever. Thank you that in Jesus, you have brought us close to you. Thank you that in Jesus, you demonstrate that we have meaning to you. Thank you that in Jesus, we are not rejected or forgotten. And that at great price, you have secured us back to you once more. May that affirm us as we go through this day. Amen. So I pray God's blessing upon you through the day that lies ahead.